<clears throat> Actually, the level coming in is quite low. I wonder why that is so low. Anyhow, that will do for now. Howdy, folks. Let me just tell everyone we're live. I'm selecting the whole of that. Who is that? Laurie. I can see you in the share, Laurie. It gave you guys different colours last time. Why don't you get different colours? Oh, yes, it does. Yes, you're there. Uh, Weston has just popped off to um, to put his uh, little one to sleep. He'll be back shortly. I haven't heard from iPost at all. He may well, may well be working. It may just be us hacking today. We will see. Bye. We have tea. Look, tea. Oh, my camera's a bit wonky. I'm slightly off to one side. Just adjust my mic as well because that's. Oh, why is that loose? I should spin round like that. What's going on? Weird. I have to adjust that somehow. Right, is the audio sound okay? Um, we'd better check the stream actually. Um, can you do me a favor, Laurie? Can you just um, check the stream audio? You might have to, what do you have to do? You'd have to turn your um, Discord audio off, I guess. Well, not off, but you'd have to mute it somehow. We'll do that yeah there's a mute button on discord use that i do a one two three four five how's the audio folks how is it sounding Um, I'll do a count again. One, two, three, four, five. How are I? Sorry, I was, I was just, I was just playing with my uh, the key I used to, to talk, because the previous one was causing some problems. So I didn't do what you asked me for there. Okay, do you I, want to check it now? I've got the. Sorry. Just look at the stream, and you'll need to mute your own audio, otherwise you'll hear me through discord perhaps just listen to me on the stream you'll have to turn the stream on and mute your audio on discord i guess i'd just be interested to see if the levels are okay not too loud not too soft this should be better than last time can you guys hear me hi william how you doing pretty good how you doing yeah we're good 
Uh, Weston's in as well. He's just putting his uh, youngest to bed or one of his uh, children. I don't know how many he's got actually. But uh, Laurie's here as well. He was just checking out the audio levels. Nice. How are you doing, Will? Oh, pretty good. I was uh, been doing some, well, the job as usual, and then the uh, I'm doing a side contract, and that's been slowing me down with my video series. But I got spy working finally, the properly, and uh, I was getting ready to create a module, system Verilog module around it, so that you could just talk to it. You know, send three. Right. Yeah, well, if you've got a few jobs, it's going to take you longer, right? <laughs> yeah. Keep, keep talking. So what are you doing on your vac vacation in Seattle then? pretty insane stuff I can see myself coming through on the desktop audio as well that's weird hope I'm not echoing yeah no no not on the discord but on the stream I better make sure that's coming out okay I think Laurie was just checking that out how'd you get on Laurie okay that's good I think we're at much higher levels now than we were before so um, Cool. Well, I think we're ready to go. Did you get the link for the share? Are you? Uh, I can see the other guys in the share, but not yourself. If you look under the live stream, the link's there. I managed to whack this camera as usual. So I'm going to rearrange it again. I do it every time. It's just... When I get up or something, or reach for something on the shelf, I end up whacking it with my elbow. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. Every single time. I can see ya. Yeah, I can see you there. You're orange. <laughs> am I? Yeah, I can't see myself on here, so I don't know what color I am. <laughs> you guys have all got colors. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Will, uh, you're green. Laurie's... Uh, kind of purple really I suppose and Western's orange cool right let's go I guess um, so I had some fun um, I was determined to try and get um, debugging working you know after our conversation last time particularly um, you were mentioning it Uh, and the answer is I have got it working although mysteriously part of it isn't working and I don't know why so I should talk about that so I, I've uh, updated the repository so if you go to the repository under the NXT BINXT branch the latest one has a document pretty much at the top level called notes 
.md uh, where I've put a copy of the uh, configuration this file here um, just wonder if I've actually changed that hopefully that should be the same as the one in notes so this is what it took to configure the thing but I had to install some other bits and bobs as well which I mentioned in the notes so in the notes I think I say um, yes you've got to you've got to install something called VS code probar s vs code which is an extension however unfortunately this is not available through the normal mechanisms you know you can't do a search under your extension to find it it's not listed on the um, known extensions but what you have to do is if you go to that link it, it kind of you can download it and stuff and that also um, if you go to the documentation it talks about the installation yeah so this is like a wrapper for the probar s which is how we're running the code um, so this wrapper will run as an extension inside the uh, uh, visual studio code that then means that you can debug from within here so um, I had to do all sorts of all sorts of hoops I had to jump through because originally I wasn't getting you know this stuff can you see how it outputs the uh, um, the uh, printf debugs those weren't showing up because you had I had to add some other bits in but if you look at the uh, installation guide there are different sections to it um, so we had to you know add in some extra bits like these RTT channels which handle that kind of um, the uh, the way that the text flows um, in this case look we've got things like we've got a date string on it and there's different types that you can choose from I think uh, we're using console level info so there's all sorts of clever things we can do with that but I'm not going to go into that right now I've got some output which is what I need so yeah go far yeah well it will do because the other thing that I changed uh, in order to get this running in debug mode is if you go to um, you need to look at the cargo tomo. Um I think it's in here let me just quickly look through so under profile release here profile dev which is what's run this is the part that's run when you're debugging when you're doing the debug build i use this optimization let uh level which it, that that passes in a size optimization choice for the compiler otherwise apparently the compiler does optimize the hell out of it but not necessarily for size so it kind of you know it's no, it, it, it just doesn't even consider size which is why you end up with something enormous I think so um, yeah that right okay yeah this is in the settings you might be able to pass that in when you do a cargo build, I don't know, but um, once it's in here, then every time the kind of debug build is is is, uh, is activated or run, then these things apply. I did. There's another thing called strip, where you can strip out the identities, a lot of the text stuff, but that just kind of breaks stuff if you do that. That's the kind of thing that you probably have on release. Yeah, to reduce the size. In fact, let me whilst I remember to take that out of there and put that in here where it belongs. Um, I was reading, you know, it was some uh, site. It was actually like a GitHub repo that was talking about how to optimize Rust um, for size. You know, the output of Rust for size, the binaries. Um, so that's where I got this from. Um, if you just do a search on debug, 
well, I couldn't really find anything. But I did find something on optimizing size, and that's 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 kind of works now. You, you may lose performance, but if you're running in debug, I guess that matters less anyhow, right? Well, it just all fits in, so I don't know what those options are. I mean, I was looking for something that would tell me that, and I couldn't find that anywhere. So, um, I'm guessing the. Well, this particular processor only has a piddly amount of flash. I mean, a ridiculously low amount. It's only 64K. You know, for for a processor of this kind of uh, caliber, you'd expect them to put a bit more in. I don't know why that is. <laughs> These just happens to be the ones I got the deal on at the time. So, you know, it's got cra the crazy thing is it has you know nearly quarter a meg of RAM. <laughs> so, you know the. Yeah, there must be a way of having some of that not live in the flash, right? Some of that extra stuff it's creating could easily live in RAM. You could, but that's going to slow it down probably. But what I'm thinking is, you know, maybe I'm not quite sure how it decides what to put where in debug. Um, whether you can do some kind of special debug linker script that kind of specified maybe you know and just said that don't put this here put it in RAM right then that would be problem solved but at the moment it's fitting so that's cool it doesn't mean that we won't have a problem further down the road when it gets bigger right Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so this is working uh, as it was before, you know, so you can program the FPGA, you can use QSPY in the limited way that the software currently supports it, which is one way currently. Um, plus the bits that we're adding, you know, which is the flash stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So the STM32 is the master, <clears throat> the, the FPGA, the synthesized QSPI mem part is a slave. Um, so there's two parts to this, okay? There's the writing back over USB, yeah, to whatever has commanded something, whether it's asking for the result of what it sent, or if it's maybe asking to do a read rather than a write. So that, that, that communication back hasn't been done for a start. But then at this level as well, at the QSPY level, uh, we've only ever at this point sent things to the FPGA. We've never read things back from the FPGA. That's what I mean by all being one way right now. No. No, the, the, the hardware's there, um, the connection's there. Um, we'd basically have to have a set of commands that the STM32 could issue to the FPGA. The, the synthesized QSPY mem, you know, part of that would have to recognize, oh, they've just asked to read, you know, this address. 
it would then go and do its bit, read that address, and send it back up the uh, QSPY, ready for the uh, STM32. Right, yeah. So that's the second part, which is, you know, not being asked to send something back, but actually the FPGA synthesis or whatever synthesized in the FPGA wishing to asynchronously send something to the STM32, right? So in that situation, what has to happen is the FPGA has to pull the interrupt down the STM32 would then have to service that interrupt by reading, say, an interrupt register over QSPY MEM. That would tell it what interrupt it was, and there would be some kind of code shared between the two devices that meant, you know, uh, th this is this kind of event that needs to be serviced. I've got to get ready to receive, you know, whatever it is. And it would then do a handshake you know, so there, you know, that interrupt may say, oh, get ready to receive, you know, four bytes from this address, you know, and then the STM32 could send the right response to that. And then the FPGA could then continue clocking those four bytes back after receiving the kind of handshake. That, that's correct, yeah. So it's kind of a, an event system that's kicked off by an interrupt. Right. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, ideally, that's what we want to do. Then it becomes really useful because you can do all the bits that you need to do, right? Um, so just looking at this code here, can you see what I'm looking at, guys? So uh, this is where we were last week. But here's, here's the weird thing, right? So we've got this working. We've got console working. So if I run this now, Hold on, let me just, um, all I do to run this is uh, I choose debug. I can actually choose it down on the bar at the bottom here. Or more usefully, if I go to the debug tab on the left hand side here. Um, do you get to see that? Uh, no, it's not running at the moment. But um, so once I'm here, I can then hit this start debugging, which is an F5, yeah? And, okay, um, yeah. So you can't see what's on the left-hand side here. That doesn't change perspective because I've changed perspective, right? Yeah, you only need to click on, well, if you click on the debug, do you see what I'm debugging? Interesting. This is going to be fun. But anyhow, so let's just, I'm just going to do the uh, F5, which runs the debugger. It then ask, yeah, so, that, oh, those are showing in the share, are they? That's cool. So I've now offered a choice, Rust Cargo Build, Rust Cargo Check, or Rust Cargo Clippy. I have no idea what those last two are. I'm just going to choose Rust Cargo Build because it needs a build task that it kicks off before it, you know, downloads. Right, so that's now running, okay, in in, in the debug mode, and it stops um, right here. On the left. Yeah, you can, can you can, can you, see, yeah, can you see the, so you can see the call stack, right? And you can see what's in watch. Can you see a variable in there? No. 
Okay, I've got a variable. I've got a ver. Yeah, I've got a variable called IDC in there. I'm surprised you can't see that. Okay. Um, so anyhow, uh, I'm going to continue with this, and that will then go to the break point. Okay. And we're at the break point in the flush code. Okay. Um, and you can already see below. Can you see the output in the terminal? Are you not seeing the terminal? Right, hold on. Let's let's solve that. Hold on. Hold your horses. Let's go to. That's it. So you can control it. That's really cool. That's really cool. Oh, don't do it yet. I, I'm going to ask you to do the next step. But hold on a sec. Bash. Read only. Yeah, I think I'm sharing. Hold on. Maybe I'm not sharing the right one. Terminal is what I want to share. You guys seeing that? Ah, uh, you might have to choose. Can you choose on live share or something? Which one? This, th okay, cause there's three terminals, which makes it confusing. It's, it's actually called terminal, this one, whereas the others are called bash. Laurie, can you see that, mate? Cool, okay. So you can see where we are in the code, right? Line 58. Yeah, and you can see what it's doing here. It's assigning it, these values to this, uh, you know, array. Now, in doing this, right, if I now click on the debug tab, I don't know what you guys can see there. If you click on your debug tag now, you should see this is the one with the little bug in the triangle. You know, on the left hand side, I mean. No, no, if you, if you go left further, the icons, yeah, click on that. Yeah, so you can see my call stack, you can see the break point that we're at, which is highlight, which is red, yeah. Uh, there's another one which isn't red yet. I think that's active. I better just turn that on actually. It is on, isn't it? Yeah. I've just turned it off. Right, it's there, it's just not arrived, I guess. Um, so, given that, uh, and can you see that there's a watch window as part of that above the call stack? Yeah, this is really weird. Maybe. Well, what? Yeah, I'm going to say I'm going to add one. See if it makes any difference. Well, maybe. Do you? Well, what you can look at different ones to me. That's going to get confusable. Yeah, and it should say variable not found, right? Now, this is the bit that's not working, which is really weird to me. I don't know why this is. So. Where we are now, can you see where we are in the code? We haven't initialized that yet. We're on the line that does that, okay? So, let's try this then, Will. If you can see those buttons, the debug buttons, what you wanna do is just uh, hit the uh, uh, continue F5 button, right? That should take us to the next break point with any luck. No, no, you... It's a, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. I think it went past our break point. Maybe this wasn't active. That's weird. It, 
Really? I don't, I don't think it has, because if you look at the debug control buttons, st st stepping isn't available anymore, which means it's gone past all of the breakpoints. So I'm going to stop this again. Bear with me. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're somewhere. Yeah, we're somewhere in the, uh, you know, the idle loop, right? So I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop this, and I'm going to run it again, because uh, that's kind of weird why it did that. I've got a feel. I wonder if. Let me check. I don't really want that open. Hold on. Let's just go past that to. Uh, oh, cannot set price breakpoint here. Try reducing ox level. Hmm. Bear with me. Optimization level. So can I put a breakpoint there? Why won't it let me put one there? That's really a What's this? Extract function. No. Right, I'll put one just above it. Okay, can you see where I've put the other one, guys? I'm gonna have right I'm just re re debugging again because it went ran past that for some reason okay what the hell is it doing all oh, right yeah okay you well you could add one that I couldn't so that's interesting but uh, anyhow, where are we? Because it's not allowing me to go to that break point. It's not allowing me to do any breaking. Hold on, let me just stop this one more time. Oh, I think it's having a hard time. Look, cannot set break point here. Try reducing op level. I have no idea what that means. Um, to get rid of those. Get rid of that. I'm gonna run it one more time. Sometimes it starts off where it was last time. I saw that earlier actually. Hold on. Flashing device. Cannot set breakpoint here. Where is it that it can't set breakpoint? Try reducing opt level in cargo build. Hold on. Cargo to more opt level. Well we've got We've already got control Z. Maybe it's got too many. I don't know how many we can have. That may be limited. Um, right, so let's go to the next one anyhow. So we're now at that point, right? And then we go on to the next one here. Now IDC should be already set to 0007, right? From here. But that is the problem. This is the bit that's still not working. For some reason, I can't watch variables in here and you can't list variables. I can see all the peripherals, right? And the registers and anything that's static, which in this case, I don't think I've got. But I can't add these, well, I can add the variables in, but it always says variables not found. Um, well, normally it wouldn't matter where it was, right? Yeah, yeah, I'd understand that. Or if you've got a list of variables, some of which are inside the function and some of which are not, then obviously you're on a sticky wicket. But inside the function, you're using, you know, I was just, one thing I would just eliminate is. Ooh, I wonder if I can do that. Probably not. I'm just going to try adding. It might not understand what self is. I don't know. Does it dereference that? I was just trying to put something in that wasn't an array, see if that made any difference. But it can't seem to sell, see that either. Um, hmm. This is weird. So that bit's still not working, which is annoying because you want to be able to see your variable values 
if possible. I don't really have any globals so that's the trouble. I don't I don't think I've got anything global. I mean these objects are kind of global I guess. But that Uh I didn't look. We could have a look in a minute. Uh yeah. Yeah, we could do that. Let's let's Right, I'm just going to stop this now then. Let's let's just do that because it's a good idea. So what do we want to do? Let's say um, uint 8 to make small, right. Uh, test, okay. And we're going to have that um, equal to uh, let's say Aye, aye. Well, now let's just set it to our favourite number, shall we? Okay. Uh, what doesn't it like about this? What? It doesn't matter if it's, you know, we're not going to change it, so. Why is it objecting to having, am I using a stupid type? I've been, uh, my head's in C world. <laughs> I've been playing C all day. <laughs> you intake. Oh, I need to write. Oh, I'm being stupid. I am still in C mode. It might be. Um, I need to put a let before it as well. <laughs> UH, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> what have I been doing all day? <laughs> UH date. You can actually tell a lot from what I wrote there. What do you think I've been working on today? Yes, but specifically. You in eight. Who does that? Yeah, you're right. See again, I'm still in C mode here, mate. Um, yeah, so where does the you in eight come from? It's a, it's a Microsoft thing. Right, because that's not the standard uint eight type is a uint underscore eight, I think, isn't it? In the standard int library after C99, it's not uint eight. Uint eight was what Microsoft did in the interim before that was standardized. That code base I'm working on is all like that, yeah. So uh, why is this still not working? Hold on, God, I'm going mad. Let, da, da, da. I've, I've definitely formatted that in the right way, haven't I? Right, what's it saying? Can't do this here. I'm value to variable. I don't know what it does. What's it complaining about? <laughs> Maybe I need to save. No. Let thing. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I'm doing. Let thing colon u8 equal. <laughs> uh, sorry. Go on in. Wait a minute. I need to. I need to let you drive. Hold on. <laughs> oh no, you did it. No, 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 that, no, no, that's, that's if, 
if test was a structure or a type or uh then then that would be like uh yeah you could do that but maybe i need a space no but if you look when i hover over oh you can't see can you see the pop-up when i hover you probably can't only in the stream but if you what it says is let space thing one colon space i32 space equals space 100 semicolon oh it's a macro there's a macro called test thank you <laughs> Uh, I probably have to save before this fixes itself, right? Oh, expected a bang. Hold on, let me do something random. It definitely hasn't got a macro called that. <laughs> Maybe you can't do that. No, that that that's no, it's not. But that doesn't make any difference, I don't think, to this. I don't think it's it's whether it's mutable or not. I don't need it to be mutable anyhow. But maybe that because of where it is. Practicing an item. Syntax error. There is no main. There is no main. Um, basically, the trouble is we're using Arctic here, which could be complicating the variable names. That's what I suspect might be going on. I don't know for sure. But um, this. Yeah, and let me. T yeah, I'll take your point. I can put that in. Just to see. Uh, actually, it doesn't like that either. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Yeah, but those are Arctic rules. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's, it's fine. So it knows where you're allowed to put code, right? So we're really fucked. <laughs> Excuse my French. The, the the you've got no chance, right? The best thing this can do is you've got these kind of. Um, You've got these structures that are shared, right? But I think the naming of these is going to be as as much hidden as the naming of those. I think I already tried, you know. Or oh, struck local. Maybe I can, let's just see if I can see local, right? That's a good one to try. Uh, I'm just going to run, see if it picks up local, because that's here that's shared that gets shared but it may rename it you see it may mangle it somehow uh yeah so i can't even see it here but let's just step in right it should be set now and it can't find it right that's already been set um yes this is a problem so i don't know what it's doing but that is one of the problems I've got. Let me just go back here. I'm going to stop that. I'm just going to go back here before I forget and remove what I just added. Where the hell did I add it? Oh, it wasn't. Was it in in it? Did I put it in in it? Where did I put it? Yeah, yeah, I think I took it out already. Okay. Yeah. Okay, right. So, 
yeah, this is annoying. So I don't quite know why we're not seeing anything here. But I am thinking... Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's all working now. I got that sorted. That wasn't working originally. When I got the debug working, I wasn't seeing the output, but I fixed that. What I haven't fixed yet is this kind of variable thing. I don't really... You know, the, the only thing that worries me is I wonder if um, Arctic is name mangling this stuff into different namespaces for these tasks, because what we end up with is something that doesn't look like this. I think these get turned into functions or something. Yeah, and I think it may be mangling the names in some way, which is why it can't see them. Which is why I thought maybe if we use something like, well, well, um, I don't know how Arctic does its magic, but it does something. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, hmm. Yeah, I don't know how this goes. Th there are trace values that get sent over SWD which is how this stuff gets you know queried so when you're running if I go back to us running I'll show you what I mean then it's des definitely you know part of that JTAG chain enables it to go and query things like the memory and stuff so I can see all the peripherals you know and you can probably see the status of those peripherals um so let me see can i but these are the peripherals not my structures yeah so if you look under the peripherals what, you, what you're looking at is the uh, items which are part of the hal yeah which are outside of you know this program it can see all of those yeah, so you can go in and look at those HAL elements. But you just can't seem to go and examine the VARs, which are effectively, you know, the local um, variables. Um, No, because this isn't a custom HAL anyhow. I'm still I'm still using the HAL underneath. Um, well, not really. It's it's the HAL. I've made I've modified a couple of bits, but that doesn't matter. It knows. It, it's looking at the one I'm using. It's not looking at um, um, anything else. It's just looking at the one that. Um, Oh, wait what am I looking at here? LibRS. Is this the library it's created? From my Arctic. That's interesting. What do you reckon? <laughs> Is this what it decomposes into? Can we see anything here? No. What the hell is food bar? Am I using food bar? I don't think so. Interrupt vectors. Um, uh, main. What am I looking at here? Stack size. That's my array. Yeah. Um, let me look further down here. See if I see anything recognizable that might be ours. 
Well, I'm just wondering what it is. These are the registers, right? Or is this just a startup file that just it hooks on? Initialize RAM. So if we go further into here, do we start seeing anything that we've created? So all this stuff is being created in the background, some of which I think is Arctic stuff, maybe. Uh, Okay. Yeah, that doesn't have any of our stuff in. This is all just default stuff, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is things like the, uh, you know, uh, exception handlers and all of that stuff system tick pendus v these are all standard stuff yeah maybe this is what it runs first before it runs our code yeah it probably runs our code no it probably runs this code and then our code yeah, probably. Hold on. Let me have a look at that. 526, did you say? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Right, so that's no help. Um... This is really interesting. Yeah, that would be the debug code. But what we're not seeing is how this gets, you know, uh, unraveled, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I'm just wondering if these names just get, you know, not these, but anything we create in here gets mangled in some way. Um, because if we add things in here, we just don't see them, right? Uh, let me run that again, try flash, because there's another one it might be able to see. I.e. one of these local variables, so-called. Um, where has that gone to? That's not gone to my breakpoint. That's weird. But it did run. Hold on. Is that breakpoint still there? Yeah. Let me run it again. Please stop at my breakpoint this time. Oh god, really annoying fly. Piss off. Uh, what's it waiting for? I don't understand. Time out. Right, let's do it again one more time. Run, can't go build. Mm -hmm. Obviously this is less than perfect right now. <laughs> Need some optimization. Our debug uh, environment. Yeah, that's having a problem. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, folks. I'm just going to. Oh, I can't. I don't want to quit because then I lose you guys. Probe cannot be created. Resource busy. Probe RS debugger error. I wonder if maybe I'm going to disconnect and reconnect the debugger just in case that's got its knickers in the twist and then I'm going to run again uh, 
that looks healthier, right? Uh, and then I'm going to go to my debug point, I'm there. But again, with flash, you can't see that either. Um, I've managed to find a single um, variable. I'm just trying to get rid of this flight. I haven't found a single variable that I can see in that watch window yet. Do I have to make it static if I put it at the top? Hmm. Is it does it support a static word? Static one minute. Let me do a quick search. So how would I write it? Let oh, let oh static mut A B C uh, colon U eight oh not U nine that won't work U ninety eight either. Use my French. This keyboard is a bit weird. Um, <laughs> oh God! Uh, let's choose our favourite number, right? Let's just give it seven. Semicolon. Yeah, it's it's not complained. We don't need that. We don't need Mutt either. Right, look. Right, so let's. No, it doesn't like that. Static variable, yeah, I don't know. It's because it's not got a, uh, you know, a um, upper snake case name. <laughs> so I'm going to call this. <laughs> yeah, cat. There we go. Does it like that? Oh, it's complaining about something else now. Cat is never used. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so let's uh, let's um, oh I'm in the wrong place here anyhow I shouldn't be putting this <laughs> in the flat file right but hold on let's put this in main let's see if it makes any difference actually yeah I, I don't know if it just works for that one or whether it does the whole file Yeah. Uh, let's do it. Uh, where was that? Seventeen. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute, you're, you're, you're looking at something different. I've moved it into main now. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if that was going to be global. Because that was something that's brought in as a crate, right? But... But... So all, all I was doing was, uh, where did that go? Here, right? So let me just copy that. Oh, is it everything below that? Or is it the one, the line, the line below that? I don't want to. Uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm back, I'm back in main now doing that, right? Are you with me? So, let's just see what it thinks. Oh, variable cat should have an uppercase snake. Whoa, wait a minute. It's saying that's not snake case. It just says uppercase. I'm sure we it was saying snake case earlier. Am I going mad? 
<laughs> yeah, really loud. Right, no squiggles. That's amazing. How can we possibly do something with no squiggles? Right, so let's just see if we can uh, add that. Right, see if we can see that bugger. And let's run debug. Can we still see that? Right, so at the moment it's saying not found, but maybe we need to go into it. No. <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. Variable not found. Cat. Uh, I think that's a Rust thing. It's an option, I think. It always stops uh, just before it enters. Is it main? Where is it stopping? I can't remember. I think it's an option, basically. I've had that before. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I can't. I, I tell you what, my debugger doesn't go back. We had this conversation today at work about that. Wouldn't it be good if the debugger would go backwards as well as forwards? <laughs> Can you imagine writing that shit? That'd be really difficult, but apparently someone was saying they think it can be done, but you'd have to have something that really tracked state. Does it? Wow. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, yes. Reset, trampoline, main. There you go. The reset vector is a start vector, right? Um, okay. Uh, right, so I mean, we can do all this stuff, but we can't look at the variables, which is annoying. Uh, the other thing that you can do is when you hover over them, you can actually see the va variables, which is nice. But we can't do any of that because, uh, you know, the variables aren't being debuggable for some reason. And I have no idea why. So that one's to solve, but we can continue. Maybe we should just give up on that right now. Uh, it does produce a crate. Every lib, every RS program produces a crate. Um, because, because I tell you, that, yeah. But don't forget, look. If you look here, can you see that I'm on the um, app for Arctic? Yeah. Guess what we have to do first if we want to see this stuff? We have to pull it in from the outside, and that's called crate, which is like your default crate. That's anything that you've already brought in above this. Yeah, see that we've got FPGA here. We can't see that unless we do this use crate. That's the thing that's up here. So I think there's like a default crate, always. Yeah, that, none of those are my or our black crab code. Those are all pieces of how code. So all of that is external library that's being brought in, you know, um, like this stuff, right? Like the QSBI. No, there's nothing. So, so clear, clearly, you know, I've configured this incompletely. You know, there is something I'm still missing. Um, 
you know, maybe someone can do a search on Rust embedded missing debug variables, watch variables or something. Maybe that will give us a hit. Um, I can run one here on. I don't know if. Um, can find that somewhere maybe yeah probe. oh is it probe run or probe rs I forget I always get confused probe yeah rs um, missing Debug variables. Let's see what that brings up. Oh what? Well. Yeah, it's not obvious. So. I'm just reading something about Rust repo. VS Code debug extension for RoboRS. It uses MSDAP protocol. It supports basic command line debugging. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, the debugger we're using is VS Code space probe hyphen RS hyphen debugger. And that wraps, that effectively wraps the um, uh, wraps probe RS. So I can see they're showing some stuff here at this URL. So let me share, share that as well. So it might be useful. Um, What does it say under the other link, Western, that you did? Did you ever look through that? Does that give you any clues? Um, I'm just reading this one. It says install the probe RST, blah, 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 blah. install the extension, da, 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 da. run the yarn. Yeah, that yarn stuff is when you're actually running the uh, extension development itself. <coughs> you don't need to do that with this. Um, Configure your own VS Code instructions. The repo contains debug example folder. If you install using extension v6, then the example folder can be found in your home directory. Okay. Um, they haven't got any variables on their list. The animation does show something. Okay, setting a breakpoint, going to the breakpoint, okay, yeah it's running, then, oh stop, 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 yeah if you run the little thing it shows a list of variables, yeah they can see variables, I'm envious. So on that link I shared, there's a little animation thing, and they're seeing variables. Hmm. I don't think they're using watch, but they are actually seeing variables. But if you look on our variables tab, you can't see any variables. Pretty sure. <sighs> okay. Are we missing something in our probe debug? There is a link. Yeah. That's right. Um, he says that they've got an example. And he's suggesting 
but their example is turn it on VS Code. Hold on, let me see if I can get a terminal. I can look at that. Um, okay. Uh, dot VS Code. Do I have the directory actually? Yeah, I do. And he's saying go to extensions tab. Yeah, go to progress debugger. Yeah, debug example. Okay, it's not seeing that must be doing all right. Oh. Oh, it's got um, directories. And it doesn't have a directory called debug example. <laughs> oh. GitHub images. Maybe let's look in that. Does it have anything in there? Nope. Ext web. Mm, ext. Hmm. Right, but the variables it's not picking up, right? Yeah. I'm not seeing anything where they're talking about stuff. Um, the example I got was from the install link that I provided in the um, notes. Oh, it's not fair. They see variables and we don't. That's kind of weird. But they're saying that the watch doesn't work, so we definitely shouldn't be worrying about that. Maybe do I? Maybe it's because I'm using, you know, size, you know, equals Z or whatever, or compiler options size. Maybe it doesn't bother with that stuff. It's strange because, yeah, I can't even see the static stuff. You can see the registers, right? There's only four of them. Oh no, they're all there. You see registers and you can see the peripherals. But you can't see any static stuff and you can't see any variables. Yeah, but then you wouldn't be able to see the stuff because that's no, that's no longer interacting with VS Code. That's just running on a terminal. No, that's just like running it on a terminal. See what the VS Code plugin is doing is it's using, it's talking to ProBRS over DAP. And it's fetching all this stuff for us, right? Uh, so if you just run it on the command line, I don't think it bothers doing all of that. Uh, I mean, there may be stuff that the command line stuff does that I'm not aware of, but I'm not sure of. I've never used it like that. Are you thinking like GDB, right? Yeah, well, we don't have to use GDB. I mean, I think Weston was thinking of using ProBar S like GDB. You know where you run GDB? Because it effectively replaces GDB. Uh, 
say yeah pretty much I think uh, that would be in the cargo I guess but I did update all of this uh, this stuff prior to the last session um, and then subsequently I probably updated a bit more but there's a version of the VS plugin extension which which is what's wrapping it that's enabling us to debug this stuff right that's version 0.40 you know that's still under development which is why it's not available under the Microsoft extensions Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's already in there. Yeah, if you look at that, you can see what we're running here. Um, it is also, I don't know if that speed has anything to do with it. Well, I think the RTT, all that's doing is, uh, I can't remember what it stands for, but that is basically like the uh, TTY that's being used. You know, for, for, the, for the print output. Go for it. looking at yeah I've clicked on it I'm looking at it. that's like the um, yeah I've kind of already got that haven't I I've got that stuff in my file no, no, but there's there may be more. What, what was the bit that you were mentioning? But is that just that's just what we're calling it, right? on line 9 that's just a string to identify it that's not I don't think that's important is it no I think that used to say example yeah it used to say probar SS that's just the name that comes up with on here on the uh, debug drop down or something yeah So um, yeah, but there could be other stuff in here, right? I mean, I don't, I don't, you know. If you look down that page, is there anything? Is there anything else? Yeah, but if you go down even further, um, we're already doing the deformat. That's the thing that kind of compresses stuff. So on here, current working functionality and known limitations. Launch yes, attach yes. By default, blah 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 blah. Connect, yes. Supports, connect and reset test, yeah. Flash, yes. Supports, support, support. Updated stepping. Variables view is ticked. View values of core registers. View values of locals and statics variables. And updates during code execution. That's ticked. I don't see that shit. 
<laughs> that's, that's the problem right there man so it's like yeah okay right that's the bit we're missing you know I think I've got the latest version but what version are they using here they don't say I don't suppose do they Up you, yeah. Yeah, it's the variable she doesn't like. And that's what's doing my head in. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand because it's definitely supported according to this. But yeah, I see nothing. <sighs> How very annoying. And I can't see any other options that I'm omitting. The only thing I'm missing is the probe one, but it finds the probe anyhow, right? I did have a problem with that, which is why it's commented out here. But it finds it anyhow. Yeah, well, the other ones were already there above that modified one, right? So that that worked, and it doesn't complain. So I think it probably wouldn't work at all if that was the case. Uh, I haven't. Yeah, I think the instructions are working because we can step and stuff. It's just the information coming back that isn't. Runtime arcs. No, I've already got that shit. I'm not seeing anything different on this page that I haven't seen before. No, I don't think I'm missing. On which one? Hold on. Where are you looking at on that page? Which, which link are you talking about? The one that I post put up or I post posted or I posted? I'm not looking at that one. Hold on. The VS Code debug extension. Yeah, that's got some extra bits, right? DAP. I mean, it is using DAP to talk to the device. Um, what else is there? Console level error. Yeah, we're using info. Is there anything else? In fact, there's there's two. They've put two configurations in there. Can you see? One is uh, what's the what's the difference? I don't know what the difference is. Oh, one uses yeah, one uses an external probe RS running. So if you run that separately, and then connect to that, that's what the second one is. Whereas the first one actually run, no, I haven't. Maybe, maybe, I don't know how to run it. I guess you have to just run it in the terminal. I don't know, but uh, uh, yeah. That's the protocol that is being used to communicate with the debug uh, adapter. You know, the, the ST link. It's using uh, the DAP protocol. Um, which was something devised, I think, originally by ARM. I can't remember what it stands for, actually. Something, something protocol, obviously. Mm. Uh, yeah. So we don't seem to be getting any further. 
which is annoying. Uh, hmm. I don't know if it's anything to do with Arctic, perhaps. Could it be that? <sighs> Damn. I do not know. I really don't. Right, I'm out of ideas for trying to fix that. Unless anyone else has got any. Anyone else find anything else on the search that was useful? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of just USB stuff. Just having a look, see if there's anything else. Basic usage. Package registry debugging with GDB and debug with surfing emulated probe debug provides. No, that's something else entirely. Let's try the next page. Seven ways to look at values of variables. No, it, it, it's a feature that ProBRS supports, but they support J. J, J they support a number of debuggers, including the J-Link one. Um, it needs basically what it uses is it uses the SWO pin on anything that supports SWD. Not all debuggers have SWO. That's an optional pin, and it uses that as a basically as a UART type thing, but only one way. Like from the microcontroller up. Um, I did see some other links. Well, you can actually use the ProBRS is written in Rust. You can actually use it as a library and query it yourself. But yeah, that's kind of way beyond what we're doing here, right? <laughs> I just want to see the variables or the values of them, more importantly. And uh, yeah, I mean, you should should be able to see it. That's what's weird about it. It's um, You know, there's something that is uh, amiss. But I don't know why. And I can't see anything else here. Yeah, I'm just going to a quick look at the uh, curling, knurling, because they use this stuff. In fact, the people there run, wrote this stuff. They've got some blog posts. I wonder if I've got anything about this stuff. Probe. 
using Program. Another page I found a while back. Yeah, I don't know. We may or may not. I may fall asleep before then. <laughs> Use a hold on order. No. What the hell is this? Damn. Well, I had some things here, but I don't. Let me just quickly, I'm just checking some tabs I've got, because I may have opened something already that may have been useful in this regard. Oh, right, we're not alone. That's always a good sign. Um, I wonder if it, I th I tell you where we could look. Have you looked on issues? Ah, I've found this one. Yeah. I've just found another launch.json file I'm looking at, but I think it's exactly the same as the others. So there's no clue here. I wonder if you need the hyphen hyphen dap. Would that make any difference? I could add it in. Wouldn't hurt, right? Let me just give that a quick go whilst we're looking. Yeah. Yes, code. Where's my VS code gone? I've now lost something else. Shit. Um, 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 that says debug. Come on. Dap. Save. Stop. Let's launch it again. Let's see if we get any different kind of result. Error. Yeah, this seems slightly intermittent, if I'm to be fair. Couldn't find a debug adapter. Right, wire protocol. Where does that go? What level? Um. Protocol JTAG. Let me try that at top level, see if it actually accepts it. I have no idea. Well, that doesn't go on the runtime marks, does it? No. Yeah, well, if I put that in, it's, um, I don't think it's liking it. It's squiggling me. Property wire protocol is not allowed. Okay, let's try putting it somewhere else, right? <laughs> uh, um, where else could it go? Core configs? 
is that to do with the core itself? I don't know. Let's try putting it here. Anyhow. Does it accept it? Oh, wait. It's not complaining. Under core configs. Console level debug. Let's do that as well. Rather than... Yeah, no, I, I, I pop, that probably won't. Let's just do one thing at a time, shall we? Let's try, if I can get the debugger running again, because it's just threw its toys out brand. That Probar's debugger, right, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Uh, let me just reset the debugger itself. It's a good way of fixing this, I think. Because it seems to get itself in a bit of a mess. Right, let me try running again. Oh. Couldn't find debug adapter described for debug type probe RS debug. What? Same again. Ah, error found argument minus minus dap. Bugger off. Uh, found argument minus dap, which wasn't expected or isn't valid in this context. Doesn't like minus minus dap. Hold on, let's get rid of that shit. But why is debug just there by itself? That's isn't that how it is in the example? Oh, it's an array. Does that make any difference? Um, so let's just save that and let's run it again because it didn't like that. So it's definitely not the minus minus dap. I don't know what that is. It doesn't even like that, right? Well, at least it debug is running again now. That's good. So we still see nothing on variables, right? Even though we're at a breakpoint here. Nothing on static. Registers are there. Peripherals there. Variables are sorely missing. So yeah, that uh, that didn't work. Um, what did we add? Oh, that was wire protocol, right? And I put that in core core configs because it accepted that. Now that may be because maybe it doesn't have a scheme, you know, schema. <laughs> maybe it just you can put anything there, and it doesn't matter. What if I just like change this to something random? Does it complain? No. <laughs> so, that's definitely not, not doesn't belong there. Because, well, if it does, it, it doesn't really understand it, right? Because well, yeah, clear. Clearly, you can put whatever you fucking want there. It makes no difference whatsoever. <laughs> but. Where did we? Where were we trying to put it before? We were trying to put it here, weren't we? And it will not have it there, right? It knows straight away that's not a top level thing, right? So where would that go? Add the option wire underscore protocol JTAG. Any and what? Listen, we're not even using JTAG. We're using SWD, right? <laughs> so, yeah. 
I'm not sure that's. Uh... In fact, we don't we don't say that anywhere. Does it care? I don't know. Uh, you don't see it in any of the examples either, right? Yeah, I don't think there's anywhere good to put that. Variable list. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think I can run it if I change that, right? So, if I go, let, let me go change it back. I think it's not going to run. But let's let's say, I go to. That. And I change and I. Take whatever the default is. I can't remember what it is. Um, <clears throat> now I go and run again. Right, probably rebuild, right? Differently this time. Waiting for the file lock on the build directory. Uh, my bad. I'm still running the debug, I guess. Hold on. What have I done here? Oh, let's do this going now. <clears throat> rebuilding everything of course <laughs> wow this wasn't exactly what I was expecting to do on the stream but there you go mm. yeah we got a size error yeah Rust LLD error section dot text will not fit in region flash overflow. Damn it, I wish I could put that somewhere else in debug. How would I do that? If I was brilliant at Rust, I might know the answer. It's like you need a separate um, linker file, right? There is a memory file, but I don't think that specifies any of that. Yeah, I there is a um where is it? Where is it? Oh, I can't actually see it. There is a memory. Where in the hell is it? Origin length 64k RAM origin. See, this is a memory file. I mean, in here we could specify that text is in a different memory location, right? Put it in RAM. Do we do that? I'm no good with linker files. This is the equivalent of the linker file, right? Yeah. If we put a manual entry for, you know, dot text, is this a regular link file or is this custom for? But there, isn't this the linker file? You know, in C, you normally have a regular linker file. Isn't that what this is? But this is like the. No, but. This is a very simple one, right? So let me just do a quick search, actually. Rust link it. files. Rust code allow adding a linker script to build RS. 
or memory layout. We have to tweak the linker process. Now, uh, what? Hold on. Thank you. Let me open it and have a look. Right, so I need to find, and that's in my, hold on, possibly. Let me, let me just go back then. Let me just step back and change the cargo first, get back for to Z. Oh, did I already change it back? I did. So I need to look also at my Tomal file. God, I can't remember where it is now. Uh, control? No. No, there's a second file. There's a run file. What's it called? Um, Sorry, I forget. Or you took. Oh, it is in cargo.tomal. I thought you said another name. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if I just manually set that to two now, yeah. Well, I'm just, just going to try two because I wonder what the different values actually mean. But let's try two. And if that doesn't work, then we're going to we'll do the um, um, comments is out. Probably rebuilding, right? Waiting for the lock. What do you mean, waiting for the lock? What else is using it? Ah, that would explain it. Oh my god, my computer's complaining about low disk space. You really are filling it up with your bit mining stuff. It says this only has 919.5 megabytes of disk space. That's, I need to um, uh, <laughs> delete some of those videos, mate. My streams. Why aren't... What's going on here? Why am I seeing? That was weird. I'm going to run. Uh, no, I'm going to um, I'm I'm going to run it again. Something weird happened there. I don't know what it was. Really? I'm running here, but maybe I should just give it a bit longer. It's busy doing something. My breakpoints are still there. It's not gotten to those yet. What the hell is it doing? This is weird. I wonder if the fact that I've got a watch stuff there makes any difference. I might as well. Ooh. 
Is it broke? Or has it got there now? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise. Halted. Right, well, wait a minute. I need to step in. Does that make any difference? Wow. It's going really slowly or something. These symbols come from link.x. Maybe I need a link.x file. What is it doing? I'm not seeing it going into anything strangely. I can't, I can't, it's running here, but I don't see any, um, right. I had to press pause for that to happen. <gasps> Goodness me. What is it? It's drop in place. Hmm? Size one, align one. Well, we didn't see that before. I doubt that will work. If it says that uh, watch doesn't work. Let me just go to the next break point. Let's put one here and go. Why didn't that actually move? Let's do it again. Yeah, we moved. Does it change? Ooh. Okay. Well done, Laurie. Uh, it seems to have slowed it down considerably, but let's forget that for the moment. We have variables. Oh look, you can see the entire array when you hover over it. Or if you expand the window, can you see it? It seems to be going down onto another line. I can't seem to make it bigger, but I can see if I hover over it. In value. What happens if I... Oh, okay, if you expand it, you can see the values underneath as well. <gasps> Ooh, right. We're there. But I don't know why it's... I don't quite know why it's taking so long, though. That's... Um, yeah, hold on. I'm going to stop. And then I'm gonna go to cargo. I'm then gonna comment the line out. I'm gonna save it. And then I'm gonna run again. See what happens. It may take us a while, folks. It was really slow last time, right? Oh, it's, why is it saying I cannot set a break point here? I had this before doesn't like my breakpoint so if I do this now it's probably not going to stop right no it's not there is it it's not gotten there or it's not stopped at that breakpoint for whatever reason let me stop it again okay I'm going to unplug it then I'm going to plug it back in and then uh, I'm going to get one of these, get rid of one of those, we don't need that. I'm going to run again. Cannot set breakpoint here. Which breakpoint? I wish it knew. Try reducing opt level in cargo. Tomo. Hold on, I can't see that file, it's obscured by the debug thing. What did you say? 50? Mm. 
Okay. Hold on. They're not there anymore. I've only got two listed in the breakpoints on the left hand side. So if I press continue, has it already gone past all of those? Are we just waiting for it? Or let me restart. Hold on. Where? All right, I'm going to run it again. It's taking its time. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's definitely doing something. Programming. That was that took ages. Crikey, what did it do in all that time? Let's continue. I wonder why it's so slow. Is it making like some huge thing? Just waiting to see if it stops anywhere. Um, what I'm seeing on the debugger is two green lights and it normally flashes red, which makes me suspicious. Yeah, can you, I'll, put, I'll put it on the top so you can see it. Can you see the two green LEDs? Two green LEDs. Normally one of those is red. So what happens if I press? Should I wait? I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. I'm just gonna give it a stop because I wanna see I wanna see that red light flash. It normally flashes. Let me run it again, see if it does anything different. I'm seeing nothing on the JTAG lights and that is weird so uh, it's doing something okay flashing device so the lights flashing red now now it stops no variable information found for 15965 not jumping I'm just gonna give it some time so it gets there but it doesn't seem to be going in Yeah, we saw a flash and then kaboom, nothing. Uh, run it again. 
again. If this makes any difference, it will rebuild it, I guess. Yeah, so it's in there now, right? Let's take it to the, what should be theoretically the uh, debug point, break point rather. Yeah, possibly. Let's just see if it gets anywhere first. I don't know if it's actually doing anything. It's just green, so I'm not seeing any activity, right, between the two. And under variables, I'm not seeing anything, even peripherals, right? Get rid of that debug point, as I remember. What happens if I pause this? Well, then it goes here. So we, we've got we've got the static look. <laughs> That's because I've paused it, right? Can I just then go to the next one? Oh, yeah, we we're, we're back. I don't see why I have to press pause in order to get it to this point. That's kind of weird. No, no, but yeah, but before that, remember we just said it. Yeah, I did press pause before that to get to that bit. Because remember it was just waiting and we weren't seeing anything. But anyhow, we're, we're now going. So if I go, let's try and step through again, right? So we see if we, let's just get to, get to here, right? And then go like that. Yeah, that's good. So the IDC value's probably changed now, right? So it's picked up, it's read something back, right? No, that was the page right instruction. Yeah. So if we if we go to here, then that should change, right? Hold on. Uh, oh, has it gone too far now? Has it jumped over that? Pause. Yeah, we're back in the. Um, well, can I get back to? Hmm? <laughs> oh I don't know what that means. Oh, we're back at loop. Hold on. Can I step out? No. Continue. Maybe we've gone past our debug points now. Ah, oh, probar is debugger. What's this error? Uh, error during step out of statement. That was me. I shouldn't have done that. Let's start it again. We're kind of getting somewhere, but it's very, um, how, yeah, it's very, um, it is. Oh, yeah. So here we go again. So we're at the start point. This should take us to our first break point, but it doesn't, right? It's the problem we had before. We just, paused it's not actually seemingly doing anything there's no comms with the thing with the uh, debug if I press pause however look where it takes us so why do I have to press pause to get to the breakpoint it should run it should run to that breakpoint and then stop not sit there doing nothing
Yeah. Let's go to the next one. Oh, what's happened here? Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to step over that. That's kind of weird. Yeah, but that's what I'm pressing. I'm just going to press continue. Well, wow, we're now we're there, but we've lost our we've we've lost our variable now. Oh no, we're not there anymore. It's off on one because it's not highlighted on this debug point. You know, you haven't got like the yellow triangle over the debug point. Pause. If I pause, yeah, we're in. Yeah. So if I press again. Does it actually get back to the other one? No, it doesn't. It's a little... Yeah, or maybe they're getting corrupted, right? Maybe... Maybe... I could change... Frequency. Yeah. I wonder, what is that? Is that 2.4... megahertz? Is that what that means? Or is that 2.4K? What if I comment this out? And take whatever the default is. Let's try that. I don't know if this makes any difference or not. <laughs> that seemed to be a bit faster actually. Okay, same problem. So I've said continue. I wonder if I press stop now, we'll actually get to the breakpoint. Yes, it does. I don't understand that. It does my head in. Why do I need to press pause? I wonder if we can get to... So we got our values back here, right? We can see that shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then... I just told it to move. Why is it not moving? Oh, it's gone. Okay, so that value is now changed to two. Look, the command because we're now using a read. Can you see where it is on line sixty-five? So we're 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 now following that, which is kind of cool. Oh, look, we've got a friend. Um, I have to be careful. This is where it kind of gets lost because um, it well it goes and calls the SPI how. So let's put another breakpoint here and then look at what am I going to look at? That that point it should have changed again. It should have pe picked up some data, right? So okay, we can still see it, which is good. Uh, we're returning seven, aren't we? So it's probably not that helpful. But although we did lose us, we, we we did lose the seven during the process. So let's come back. So that's done the read, and we're looking at the result of the uh, IDC after the read, where we've. Yeah. So that that's right. That's what we end up with. I guess. What did you do? I'm not going to say hello to everyone. Try not to get me tangled up. Hi, folks. Okay, mate. Thanks for joining. Yeah, well, we're getting there, albeit somewhat slowly. <laughs> we just have to keep trying, right? Maybe you can help, Twinkle. Use your magic pause on the keyboard. <laughs> Are you after something, Twink? I did feed you already. Mm -hmm. 
Or are you just being uh, friendly? Right, okay. Okay. Yeah, have fun. Right. Uh, is there anything else we can do with this? I mean, we could try doing some development and testing it as it's working, albeit slightly sporadically. I wonder what the flakiness is being called by, caused by. I wonder. Uh, I'm just going to do a check here. Who's still on? We're all still on. It's just William left. Right. What should we do, guys? Do some code. Let's remember what we were doing, actually. So we were, after all of that, we were, so first of all, we did the right enable, yeah. Then we did a page right. So we're writing directly to flash to value seven uh, at zero, zero address. Right, those that's address, and then we do a flash read. We're setting the command to read, but we're keeping the address the same. And just so that we know we're changing stuff, we're setting that last byte to zero because it may already be seven. And then we're doing the read and we're getting seven back, and that's where we are. That's what we did. Um, what should we be trying? I've lost you, Laurie. Did you get cut off? Was that your push to talk button escaping? Um, so we raise the sectors required as a first step you mean so, so you'd have to have like something like uh, uh, let uh, sectors um, equal whatever the size was what are we pulling in here uh, u size this one count count uh, divided by um, I'm just sticking to the case where we've got 512. That's not going to be enough, is it, for a program? What are we doing at the moment when we're programming in multiple bytes? We don't know how big the transfer is going to be in this case, do we? Um, because that U size tells us how much of this is full. Because that may be all full or partial full if it's not a multiple of 512, right? because it's going to call this several times. Yeah? Can you remember, Laurie? Yes, but you don't know the size. Where do we get the size from? That's you're right, so if we look at the FPGA, right, uh, where does that get that from? I've got it in here, there. 
So that needs to be put somewhere, right? Let's let's copy that. Let's put we can use that as a fixed number for now, but later that will need to be somewhere different. So let's put that where do we put that? We need something global. Um, what do we have? Action file, command, device. Those those are crates, aren't they? They're not anything. Hold on. Do we have anything global? Bear with me. These be something that's common to both of them. So under command here, the struct has nothing. But we could have something else, couldn't we? We could put something in here. Oh. Uh, image size, right? Something like that. Um, wait a minute, what did we do? We did this let and it's const and it's uh, of type. Um, was it u size? Yeah, quite possibly, but before we do that, I need to just define it somewhere before I lose what I've just copied so that we can pick it up. Is it U size? It was U size, wasn't it? That's the correct type. And that needed to be, what was it, static? What let us do this before? What did we use before? Damn it. We don't need let, maybe. Pub, I size, U size. Pub makes it. Okay. I need to put static here. My size. It wants that to be in caps. Look, remember what I said before, Laurie, about the recommendation. See what it's saying here? It's telling me my size should have upper snake case. What's upper snake case? Don't it just mean all caps? Hold on, there is a way of doing this automatically. But manipulating this menu is very um oh, why can't I quick fix? There we go. Control plus control plus. Oh no. That's not helpful. What happens to clash? All right, I don't know. You know, fucking hell. My size. Or, well, in fact, let's use IMG. So we used image. Yeah. So if we say IMG, I'm just going to stop this running. By the way. Um, so if we go back to. Rush. No, let's change the FPGA one first. So where we're we using that here, can we say can we do that? Is that gonna pick it up? That seems to be okay with that, oh, wasn't it? 
There we go. Cannot find I'm sizing this scope. Uh, quick fix control plus was that control plus dot control dot no code actions available twinkle what would you like you want me to open the door I need to pull it in presumably to the crate here does that work maybe no didn't like that is it because it's static <sighs> can I do this then Who knows what it is, but it can't find it in module crate control. What about that? No. It knows what it is, but or uh, Visual C knows what it is, but Rust does not. Okay, brilliant, thank you, Weston. Have a, have a good kip. <laughs> if I put it there, let's get rid of this cat because we don't really need that. <laughs> let's just put it there for a sec. I know this isn't good, but for the purposes of this, can we now see it? No, we can't even see that here, look. I cannot find any size in this scope. Consider importing this static. Use crate. No, oh, it's telling me what to do. There we go. That should work. Why wasn't the control one working then? I don't understand. Right, it's happy. God, that was difficult. Try and get rid of that shit. And then I can do the same thing. Over here. So what were we saying? In prep, we might want to do uh, that divided by well wait a minute if we do that percentage hold on there's a few things we might want to do here so that one uh, 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 Yeah, let's 
my keyboard skills. There we go. Where did we define sector size? Was it in flash? Sector. Flash device. Sector. thinking so fraction so if it doesn't fall on sector boundaries fraction is what we'll end up with as part of the sector yeah Rem U sixteen. What? Okay. And then the other part that we might need to know is how many sectors, which is just that. In fact, it's exactly the same, except this is actual sectors equals that divided right that tells us how many but we need to add one to this right unless it's an exact size is that right is my math correct? Because if we just divided, that would tell us how many sectors. Um, but it would be one less than the sector it needed, unless it happened to fall exactly on a boundary. Does this round down or round up? Does it round down or round up, Laurie, do you think? Do, so do we need floor or something here? Do we need to round up? What, what's the one that rounds up? Is it... Yeah. Uh, ceiling rust so we want to round up don't we A ceiling uh, we might need that well in fact in this case we probably won't primarily because we're just going to erase all the sectors. You'd normally do that if you were going to read the leftover bit. But yeah, in this case, we're just going to write over the entire sector, irrelevant of what's already there. Rust ceiling division. How would I perform ceiling, ceiling division rust? Stack overflow. <laughs> we never use stack overflow, do we? Rust stable 1.61 over on seal. Ooh. You can use div rem crate. Ooh. Rust stable on six branch. Hold on. 
Is it just sealed? Like that. Hold on. See if it complains. I don't know if we need to import anything or whether that's a floating point. No. I don't want to seal floating point. do that what does that return yeah it returns a floating point that's no good doesn't seem to be just a seal or is there save cannot find function seal right so there seems to be a floating point one but not a regular one so let's just do probably the easiest way to do it is this right plus one the only time that wouldn't work would be if it was an exact sector size oh because it's using u size it doesn't like that to use as uh, what is it? Int no. Uh, no, it's not. We just need it's uh, unsigned. Thirty two will be fine. U16. 16 will be big enough actually. Hold on, let me just deal with a cat. I'm just going to let the cat out. Hold on. Hold on. <sighs> Cannot divide U size by U16. I need to do that. Save. Yeah, that's okay. Did I need to actually do that? No. It doesn't like this here because this is a U size. No, that's a U size. So let's do the same thing. Maybe I shouldn't be using U size for this, but anyhow, whatever. Now we should be working, right? Yeah, it's happy with that now. So this should always be right. The exception is if it's on a sector boundary. This is going to be wrong. Is that right, Laurie? Do you think about the logic? So if fraction isn't is 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 zero, then this will be wrong. So that kind of add one only needs to happen if fraction is zero, right? Um. So. Uh, Oh, I've forgotten the structure of the um, the if. Is it like, oh crikey, is it if uh, action
Okay, sorry, you've got a better way of doing this, right? So what you're saying is you're increasing image size. Se se sector sector minus one to image size, yeah. Is that what you're saying? Gotcha. I understand. Uh, yeah, that brings a bell actually. And I need to, um, oh, that should be plus. And then that needs to be, um, that needs to be surrounded. Is that it that that is a u16 so those are u16s so we're probably okay with that yeah we just do a save does it it's not squiggling underneath me yeah and then we probably don't even need this right now Sector minus one, you mean? Here, or sector minus one underneath. Oh yes, well, I've forgotten about that. like thus. So um, we would then need to, at this point, only in the prep, we need to uh, erase the sectors. Now, each runs 4k. There could be an optimization here because we could erase in larger sections. If you remember the data sheet, I don't I seem to have lost the tab that I had open for that. But let, 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 let's assume in 32s and then 4s. No, you could do it in 64s, 32s, and 4s. If you're going to be really optimized, should we just be lazy and do it in fours? <laughs> Four. <laughs> because uh, that's an optimization, right? This is going to be min viable. Oh, crikey, what did that do? So, oh, golly. Yeah, well, we can do a check for that, I guess, or a delay. So uh, for, oh, what am I doing? I'm doing sectors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think read the status as in the status register. You mean? Um, hmm. Where's my goddamn main? Uh, where's my main gone? That's very annoying. 
Oh, here we go. I was just going to look. at something here. Because I've completely forgotten the uh, signature. Oh. Oh. Hold on. That's what I wanted. It's that sort of arrangement. So, yeah, I knew that was dodgy that way. So for sector uh, in naught to sectors, right? this as well. So we're starting off at the zeroed sector um, address actually isn't it? What do I pass? To the I pass the address to arrays, don't I? Where's my bloody data sheet? I've lost it. I had it open and it's gone. Have you got the data sheet open per chance, Laurie, that we had last week for this chip? Initially it'd be zero, and then oh, in fact that shouldn't be sixteen. That should be. It needs to be new thirty-two, doesn't it? Sixteen won't be big enough. Oops. So. <coughs> do here is this kind of thing. Where's our commands gone? So we want something like this. Is it what's the format? Is it like this? Do we need did you have the data sheet open, Laurie? Uh, hold on. I'm gonna have to find it. I thought I had it open but I, I just can't remember what we do. Is it so like the right here uses five? Yeah. I'm just thinking if the arrays is similar. So um, here. Right, let's take that. That doesn't need to be there. Yeah, 
mass, but I think it's one, two, three, four. I'm with you. I don't need the last bite because I'm not picking anything up. Yeah, is that what you're saying? And then this this will be uh, erase 4K, right? I mean, we could have cheated, you know. We could have just erased the whole chip, but anyhow, let's not do that because <laughs> we will need multiple images. So yeah, so the address here needs to be set. That will be. Oh, how do we set the address? Um, we need to take, oh, I've done this before on some of the other things. If I look at FPGA, I decoded the address here. You need to kind of do this sort of stuff, right? No, it's the other way around. What am I talking about? I need to take the address, so I need to set up the IDC one. That needs to equal uh, address. Still can't quite get used to this editor. I can't remember what the order of the byte. This will be the MSB, right? So that will be address. Uh, meow. Uh, anded with. Uh, what do you do, of course? What do you want? With, uh, what was it? Uh, now I need to and it, mask it first, don't I, and then shift it. Well, I only need the top. I only I need the top four. Sorry, the top eight bits first, right? So what is that? Address is a U thirty two, right? So the first, I need the first two bytes. No, the first byte. But I don't need the the others. Um, in fact, that's not true because I don't need to go up that high. I think I need this lorry. I think I need that because it's those that I need, right? For the for for the MSB because we don't actually use those. Are you with me? Because there's only three bytes to describe the address. Those, then those, and then those in that order. So if I am that right, and then shift it. So like, um, and then I do a. You know, a shift by. Oh, I do a shift by a uh, sixteen. All right, like that, and then I do the same sort of thing now for the second one. I do this twice, 
and then in this case I'm only shifting by eight and then that's going to be and then this will be oops and I don't need to shift at all do I right oops is that right Yeah, so that needs to yeah two and three. Those should then be right. That should then erase those sectors. But then I need to check the status register, right? So I need to run um something that basically just yeah I did that before didn't I with the um, ID if we do it with the ID, that read more than one though, didn't it? That read three bytes. Effectively, I, do I just need to read one byte, right? Yeah? Is that right? So is it, you see, you can do, I'll tell you what, here, here look. Yeah, um, hold on, I can do, I can do this cheaply, like that, hold on. Right, I'm passing in an anonymous array with two things. And then that should be, what was the instruction did you say? Status. Read, read status LSB or MSB. Would it be one of those do you think? Like LSB or MSB? That's what that is, read status LSB say. Let's just say it's that. Um, so what I'm going to say here is basically do uh, yeah, I can do that before the for loop, can't I? Um, let me just do that. Do you? I don't think, is there a do while in Rust? Shit. Uh, I'm not sure if I can do this actually. Yeah, oh fuck. It's going to be the. Yeah, I can't. That should be. Right, this should be one. And it should be. The instruction. Bear with me a sec, mate. I've just realised I can't do this. I have to do... That should be a comma there as well. I 
can't use this anonymously. Yeah, I just need to define that up here. That will be an instruction, right? In fact, that will be... Because we're going to use this for the... Um... No, we won't. Let's call this... Read status LSB RSL okay um, and that which bit did you say Basically, like, oh, for fuck's sake, excuse my French. Um, that would normally be, yeah, right? Oh, am I testing for one or zero? Is it? So that will work then. Yeah, I'm ending with zero one. I'm masking it, and if that's one, will that work? Can I? Is there a do while? Is there a? Sorry, is there a do while? Yeah, I don't think it likes do while. <laughs> Uh, should there be a semicolon at the end? I can't remember. Hold a minute, hold on. Does Rust have two words? Probably doesn't have two well. Rust has no do well loop. <laughs> Use loop, a break. Okay. So, loop. And so that would need to be would this work? Or do I have a operator presence issue here? Right. 
get rid of the uh, model, obviously. And then, let's just indent this. You think this this should be like that? Oh, come on, guys, like that. Why has it got an issue with this? Maybe a save. It doesn't like that. Oh, I don't think it needs the brackets. to the block. Yeah. Look at their example. Oh, of course. I'm still not happy. It doesn't like that. Expected ball found you ate. That is a U8, the result of that. Um, ah, good point. How do you do that in Rust? Uh, yeah, that's probably gonna work. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I, I, I am I'm deep, deep in C. <laughs> I've had the most ridiculous things today, honestly. I've, I've, you know, how, how to infuriate a developer, right? Is um, make printf not work because <laughs> I've been doing my head in today. It, it, the printf I'm using corrupts the fucking data. So what it prints out is nothing like what you, what the actual data is. It's some weird wacky thing going on and it's like it's just shocking it's just like what um, and it turns out I think I think it's because it doesn't support longs it's like an abbreviated print library printf library and because I'm, it's the 64 bit it seems to be corrupting it so I'm trying to print three arguments, one of which is a, is a uint64. Um, and what it outputs is nothing like the values. It just, it's like it gets all the bytes mixed up. It's bonkers, mate. Been doing my head in. It sent me round and round in circles today. Um, but when I actually looked at it in the debugger, the values were correct after all. I was just wasting my time. It's just the printf was printing rubbish um, so it's happy with that uh, not happy with this though is that because that needs to be as u16 what is that what is a u16 what's the problem Do I need to convert that? I thought I could just, what are you saying? I have to do that first. That would seem extreme, but there you go. Right. Um, yeah, do I, where do I do that though? Do I do that? So I have to do that here, right? Does 
it like that? No. Oh, it's because I've got 20. <laughs> Fuck it. You dick. Oh, for fuck's sake. I hate this editor sometimes. It just doesn't operate the way I'm used to. Right, so that's the trick. I just copied it. Clearly, I didn't. Oh, you son of a! Come on. Seems awfully complicated, doesn't it? Let me just let the cat out because it's she's a bit upset that I'm ignoring her, and I'm going to be in trouble. Hold on. You want to go out? Is that what you want? No, you want food. I've already fed you. You've already had food. You're not having any more. I'll give you some biscuits. That's what you're getting. That's all you're getting. <coughs> There's nothing more, Twinks, I'm afraid. And you can find your own way out. You've got a cat flap. Use it. Right. Uh, so, right, where were we? Yeah, this is awfully long-winded. Um, it could be optimised significantly. How do we know that's worked? Because if we read it now, it would all be FF. We'd have to write it, read it, and then erase it again, wouldn't we? Be the only way of knowing for sure if that was working. But if I write it and read it, it's all going to be FF, but it already is FF in all of those bytes. Correct. Yeah. All right. Forgive me. There was one byte that's been written to this. But then what that would tell me is the first sector got erased, right? Hold on. This cat's doing my heading. What are you like today? Why don't you use the cat flap? Um, uh, what are we doing for time? I might call it quits anyhow. It's, it's quarter past 11. So I might come back to this. I mean, I could run this now, but there'd be no way of checking it easily. So let's just leave it where it is. Um, I think so. Um, if I
specific compiled. It won't run prep anyhow, will it? Or will it? Could not compile due to five errors. Set a problem anyhow. Doesn't like sectors equals count. Sectors equals count divided by doesn't like what fifty six oh <laughs> look yes yes not good. Reported that. Help remove these parentheses. <laughs> you just tad <laughs> let sectors equal so it's, it's saying it doesn't want the outer ones it says these are unnecessary <laughs> what are you doing putting extra ones in it's not needed at all you stupid programmer <laughs> what's wrong with you correct it immediately <laughs> And you could actually turn that feature off if you wanted. Uh, I'm using something I shouldn't be using. What am I using? Core eye size. Core eye size. Where am I using that? Control. Yeah. Yeah, that's running now, so. And that may well have just erased them all. Wait a minute, we're not seeing the thing that we saw before, are we? Oh, yes, we did, by 07. But it hasn't run prep, so yeah, it was just so yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that next time. So let's let's just uh, what I will do actually is just here I put. Here to do test this <laughs> earlier on you were trying your local one yeah 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 
I'll be around tomorrow evening. I'm kind of in a, I, I will be kind of around in the day actually a little bit, but I don't always have that turned on because I will be working tomorrow, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's have a look at that. Maybe tomorrow, tom yeah, tomorrow evening or something, perhaps. Right. Yeah. Okay, calling it a day then. Let's stop the stream, me and, and I will speak to you in the morrow. Thank you, Laurie, for joining. Um, you're the last one standing, apart from me. <laughs> okay. Ciao.